Hi guys, welcome back to Bark and Jack. I'm Adrian, and today I'm off to see a friend with a new watch, and it's getting quite a lot of attention on social media. Let's go check it out. So guys, before we start exploring this thing, I just want to say a big thanks to Kev for letting us have a bit of time with his new baby. I'll put a link to Kev's YouTube channel and Instagram page in the description below. Uh, do go check him out just as a, a piece of appreciation for allowing us to spend a bit of time with his new watch. I appreciate that this title is somewhat clickbaity. We will be discussing this later, I promise you. But let's look at this piece to start off with. So this is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, reference 114300. The one we're looking at is the 39mm version, but they start at 26mm. 39mm is the, the largest out of the this Oyster Perpetual family. This version was launched this year, Basel World 2018, and it costs £4,150. Now Kev's decision making around this is solely based on the fact he loves the old Air Kings. He dislikes the new Air King with all the green, with all the color, and, and I kind of agree. And the new Air Kings that I watch that I kind of love and hate. I love a lot about it and I dislike a lot about it. Ultimately, Kev didn't like it, and this Oyster Perpetual ticks all the boxes for him, and he felt it connected more to the older Air Kings than the new Air King. What I like about this is Rolex have kind of pulled back from a really weird decision that they made, and that you can actually still get these. The, when they first launched the 39mm Oyster Perpetual, they did so with little touches of colours around the outside on, on the hour markers, and I really didn't understand it. it. It felt like they were trying to create a fun watch or a fashion watch, and it, it just felt like a really unnatural... Um, disjointed move for Rolex. They have really pulled it back with this guy. So let's look at the movement. It is an automatic, completely in-house 3132 movement. It's cost certified and it has an accuracy of plus minus two seconds per day and it has a power reserve of 48 hours. Now you will have come across this in so many of Rolex's models. It's in all of the OP, the, the Oyster Perpetual models. It's in their Cellini range, and it's also in their Explorer, the 39 mm 214270. Let's start with talking about the whole entry level or a, a affordable entry level Rolex. I'm gonna destroy that kind of title straight away because this movement is not pissing about. This movement is a full on, it's a sports grade movement. I appreciate if you were to put the sports models in a hierarchy, the Explorer would be at the bottom of them. However, the Explorer itself, I mean, you know I'm a big fan of the Explorer, but the Explorer itself is not a watch that is messing about. So this movement is, it's a very resilient movement. That's what I'm trying to say. So let's continue looking at a few more specs. As I mentioned, this is the 39 millimeter wide case and they start at 26. For a chap, I'd say anything 34 and above would be decent. 34 would certainly feel a bit more dressy. For me, the sweet spot would be 36. I do like my 36 millimeter watches. However, the 39 millimeter didn't feel oversized like I feel though the Explorer 39 millimeter case feels like. And that might be because it's got a domed polished bezel as opposed to a flat angled polished bezel like the Explorer. It's got a water resistance rating of 100 meters, and it's of course made out of Rolex's 904L stainless steel. Now the design of the case, I couldn't see any difference between this and the Explorer. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it has the same case. The bracelet is also the same. It has the Oyster bracelet. However, the clasp is different. It has the Oyster clasp. Now, depending on how much your wrists increase or decrease with the heat change. You'll, you'll have your own feelings around how important that is to you. Everyone has their different requirements of what a watch needs to be able to do. And that could be a deal breaker. 
for you. Now you could look at this clasp as a downer because it doesn't have the extra features of the safe, safety oyster clasp or the fact it doesn't have the, the extension, the easy link extension. Or you could look at it from the other side and see it as a brilliant cost saving initiative with the fact that it is still a very, very well made clasp and it isn't gonna come apart easily. The, 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 the little section that pops up to unlock the clasp, you can't pull that up uh, by accident. You're not gonna catch it on the pocket of your jeans or something and pull it up. You have to get your, your, your nail under it and lift it up. So I think this is fine. I think it's good compared to a lot of other companies it's better, it's, it's still a kick-ass clasp. If we compare it to my 36 millimeter Explorer, the 14270, it's still a better clasp than that, even though it hasn't got the safety lock. And so it's, it's kind of swings and roundabouts. This, this is a lower priced, I'm not gonna say affordable Rolex, but it is a lower priced Rolex, and so you have to have some give with that. So let's get on to probably the most important part of this watch, and that is the dial. This dial is, both incredible, <laughs> it's, it's incredibly good looking and incredibly simple. It's, it's quite amazing how just so plain this watch is. It's just telling you the time. That is all it's doing and there's nothing fussy about it whatsoever. And, and you know what, I, I love that about watches. So we have the 18 karat white gold markers. We have the white gold um, logo at 12 o'clock. We have the straight hands. And then we have this incredibly subtle, very smoothly sunburst black dial. Now the sunbursting is so smooth and subtle that the dial actually looks quite matte for the majority of the time. It's not when it catches the light that you get the little glisten of those kind of streaks bursting out from the center. Now the thing that I like about this dial is the fact that everything is so incredibly plain. It makes that logo at 12 o'clock really pop it really makes it stand out. And it kind of, it's just sitting on its own up there. And I, I, I really like that. I, I think it's great. I like the fact that nearly all the fussiness has been taken away from this watch to make it, I don't want to say cut costs so far as making it a budget watch or cut costs so far as um, reducing the quality. But I think cutting costs to the point of, let's just get this thing to tell the time, do it well and be packaged in a fantastic package. And that's what they've done. I guess the only fanciness is the white gold that's on the dial. And that is it. Now, even on Rolex's website, they talk about this being a tried and tested model. And that's what this is. This, there's nothing new in this watch. There's nothing um, groundbreaking. There's nothing even head turning about this watch. But that's what I like about it. You, you can see it, it's the complete polar opposite to their solid gold or that rainbow Daytona that they have with all those horrendous diamonds around the outside. It's a polar opposite to all of that BS that they do with their high-end watches to kind of cater for the uber rich. This is kind of a nod to why Tudor was made so that the every man can afford a, a Rolex. I just feel like it's it, you're getting a huge amount of watch for the money. And I know £4,000 is still a shit ton of money it's a huge amount of money but you're getting a rolex this isn't going to hold its value in the same way that an explorer will hold its value but it's still a rolex it's still got the rolex movement and it's not like some uh, throwaway movement that they've just hashed together to to make a watch that can fit within this price banding it is still a kick-ass movement now, I've got a lot of shots here with my old Explorer. My Explorer is from 19, 1998, and it's the 36mm the 14270. I've put it there so you can see a comparison with the size increase, but also the kind of comparison around the dial as well. We, we didn't have a 214270, the new Explorer, um, with us. And so I, I thought this is the kind of closest thing that you can see as, as a comparison to this guy, because these guys will be competing watches. There are very, very few differences between this Oyster Perpetual 39mm and the Explorer 214270 39mm. Firstly, we've got the bezel, which I've mentioned. The Oyster Perpetual bezel is domed and polished. The Explorer bezel is flat and just slightly angled. 
The Oyster Perpetual has the Oyster Clasp, whereas the Explorer has the Oyster Safety Clasp with the Easy Link extension. Another difference is the hands on this thing. Uh, this guy has the straight hands and the Explorer has the Mercedes hands. On the Explorer, we have the 369 dial. So then it comes down to price. This is 4,150. The Explorer is 4,800. Now you could also factor in the fact that this guy will be sitting in the shop window or it's highly likely this guy will be sitting in the shop window. It's unlikely the Explorer will be sitting in the shop window. So that could be a factor to play. The other side of that is, and this could be something that swings it for someone who's trying to get an Explorer and uh, has a tight budget. If you were to fly outside of the EU, if you're in, in, in the EU, then you could quite likely pick up one of these at the airport and get it tax free. Now, airport authorized dealers don't hold on to sports models, but they will. Uh, I've, I've spoken to watches of Switzerland. They will hold um, non-sports models for you. And you will be saving yourself 20%. 20% of 4,150 is a lot of cash at 830 quid. That's a lot of cash. You might even be able to get yourself an Oyster Safety Clasp with the easy extension with that cash. So let's talk about the clickbait title and the fact that a lot of people are calling this the entry level Rolex or the affordable Rolex. It's a Rolex. <laughs> you can't have an affordable Rolex. It's just, it's just not possible. I don't feel those phrases go together. There's, there's some discord there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like saying the Porsche Boxster is the affordable or the entry level Porsche. It's still a Porsche. It's still a Rolex. It's it, it's a fully fledged. There's no BS about this. It's not as if it's got the Rolex crown, but then it's got an ETA movement inside. This is a fully fledged Rolex. It's just a Rolex that isn't messing about. This is an every man, every occasion, every day Rolex, as opposed to a dressy Rolex or an I'm rich as fuck Rolex. Four thousand pounds for anyone. I mean, I. I've never been rich, so I've, I've, I don't know if anyone could feel £4,000 is, is not a lot of money. But £4,000 is a shit ton of money. No one can say that this is the affordable Rolex. Entry level, no. Entry level is Oris. Entry level is Sin. Entry level is Hamilton. Entry level is Seiko. That stuff can be seen as entry level, not Rolex. That's not me just being some Rolex fanboy and um, I'm, I'm not butthurt about the fact that people say this is the entry level. It's not my watch. I don't own it. I don't give a shit. But I, I think it's silly that people are applying these titles or these feelings towards such an expensive watch. It's more expensive than the bloody Speedmaster. Is Speedmaster entry level? That's not an entry level watch. Guys, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Again, this probably should have been a bloody discussion, like a, a live chat or something. Or maybe it's not that interesting, I don't know. I know there's a lot of money in the world, I'm not, I'm not naive about it. I'm, I'm in bloody Canary Wharf. This is the global centre of money. I still can't see how someone can say a £4,000 watch is uh, affordable or a Rolex is entry level. So guys, that's my video on the new Rolex Oyster Perpetual. Let me know your thoughts are, as always, in the comments below. A big thanks to Kev for meeting me and letting me play around with it. Do go check out Kev's Instagram page and YouTube channel as well. He's got some really cool watches, a lot of vintage watches as well, which is really cool to see. As always, check me out on Instagram as well, at Bark and Jack. Subscribe to this channel down there. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. Double tap the thumbs down button if you didn't like the video. Check me out on Facebook as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Aside from us, so I